eggs are endlessly fascinating, whether they're like this one or indeed like these ones. Whether you're doing something relatively realistic like the nest with the eggs or something a little more sugary like these Easter eggs. Because as watercolourists they teach us how to get beautiful smooth washes and if we've got speckled the eggs then we can use different techniques to get those speckles. So that's what I'm going to show you today. We'll start with getting those smooth washes and then I'll show you five different ways of achieving lovely speckles. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire. Every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week it's all about those smooth washes and those lovely speckles. And then afterwards, I get to eat chocolate. The easiest way I find to draw eggs is to draw a circle, then find the halfway point and decide how tall you want it to be and put a little line across. And then simply do a little arc and then turn it the other way and do a little arc round like that. And we've got a nice egg shape check. So this side is a little bit thinner than the other side. And just even those up. If you don't like drawing eggs or don't find that easy, well, then there's loads of templates you could just do from the good old internet. Uh, just have a look on somewhere like Pixabay and I bet there's a template there. I just did a, a line so they could all sit in a row. You could do any sort of design you fancy. I'm going to gently rub out all those guidelines. This is just a piece of £140 knot, which is cold pressed paper. I'm going to use my little Artistro set because it's got some really sort of sweety colours in it. And I like to spray the pans just with clear water just before I start so that that helps loosen the colour because otherwise you spend so much time scrubbing away at the colours. So we've got different ways of painting our eggs. The most important thing is to get a beautiful soft transition so the first way we could do them, and if you're happy to work quite quickly, this would be good for you. If on the other hand, you're in quite a warm climate and everything is gonna dry very quickly, this might not be the best way. So we put a line of color around the outside and then just use clean water to blend that in. And the reason I say if you're in a hot climate, don't do it this way, because you'll just find that you'll end up with that line on the outside and it might be hard to get away depending on what color you've chosen. That is a very wonky egg, so I'm just going to tidy up that edge and make it look a little bit more egg shaped. Put enough colour on the edges you can go back in while it's wet and just drop more colour in because we're trying to get it nice and smooth. Now, of course they have a beautiful shine to them so take a th what we call a thirsty brush so that's a clean brush we've taken off the excess moisture and then we can just use it to pull out a lovely soft highlight there rather than leaving that white which would look too stark and shiny because your, your egg isn't usually shiny we could do it like that if it flows back in you can always just do a couple more little passes round we'll do it the same way on this one so 
university brush pull that color away this one the, uh, the alternative is to wet your egg first so either if you work quite slowly and there's no need to hurry this is just meant to be a bit of fun but say you work quite slowly or it's really warm where you are and you're worried about things drying too quickly wet your paper first and then just go round the edges with your colour and it'll give you a lot more time to to work the paint it'll either do it for you if some colours are really lively and busy on the surface of your paper but if the colours you've chosen isn't you can just pull that in and then work it drop in extra colour at the edges if that's needed and then again just we're just aiming to blend that in and get a beautiful smooth transition oh look at that go do you know that's it's the only colour in this set that is lively on the paper all the others sort of just sit there which was one of my gripes about them but they are very pretty colours but this one is so pretty get that lovely soft highlight that we want to pull out and you can see that green just stays where you put it not like the pink which zoomed around it's just worth getting to know your colors and know which ones are going to be rather slow and which ones are going to be lively you need to let those dry this is a great time to get rid of any pencil marks that you don't like and we could just carry on from here but what's really nice to do is to deepen those colors and make them even rounder by doing a second layer so what I'm going to do is wet my egg just gently because we don't want to disturb the paint and I am going to select this deeper mauve and just put it round the edges so a deeper shade of the base colour and this is a great opportunity if any of your edges have gone a bit skew with just to tidy them up smoothing it into the middle with our clean water and then not forgetting to pull out with our thirsty brush that nice soft highlight I'll just use that little deep yellow that going with a slightly deeper shade of the colour that you've used so this is a far more orangey yellow but a slightly darker one just adds another layer and dimension to to that egg it just gives it a bit more roundness the colours you've chosen are a little bit too sugary you could always use this as an opportunity to calm them down by putting a slightly um, duller version over the top or even putting a complementary colour over the top and now for the fun speckledy bits and on the first one we can literally put in a few marks we can do them different sizes big marks little marks we just want to make them look random and it's nice actually to vary the darkness of those marks particularly when you come more to the center so by doing that we could put them on quite watery and then pull them off so that we have some say dark and then just get a little bit of var variation there.
With our second one we're going to just dampen it with clean water and we're going to use some watercolour pencils and they have to be watercolour pencils not ordinary pencils. And then let's choose a nice speckle, we'll choose a diff couple of different co colours. I think purple would look fun on the yellow and maybe, oh, I don't know, a little bit of blue. And what we need is a piece of sandpaper very gently sand and blow away any dust. We could just do a couple of colours on top of each other if we want to. Now which one should we do? I'm going to do it over this one over here simply to stay safely away from that one and again I'm just gently wetting the surface and I'm going to use some of this which is called Brusho. Brusho is crystal ink, it's a powder incredibly strong. You really have to be careful because it gets absolutely everywhere. You'll see that I've got a drawing pin in the top which gives just a little hole and then if I tap some of that powder very gently onto the damp surface. Can you see how it starts to explode and move? And this is black, but the black is made up of terracotta and blue and green and all sorts of colours. Not all of them are multi-colours, but I know that that black is lovely. So that's another beautiful speckle. I have just torn a hole yeah, I hope that's safe, in the middle of a piece of old paper and I'm going to spatter. So this is just to stop the spatters going where I don't want them to. So this is a dry surface, small brush and I'm just tapping gently to get fine speckles. That's probably all I need. And then my final one, we're going to do exactly the same. Speckles into damp, a damp egg. So I'm going to put that there. Don't want it to be too wet because we'll get really fuzzy marks, which is not what I want. I think we'll just choose a tiny bit of purple. And you see that we get far softer marks there. I could let it dry and then maybe do some little drier marks on top. But maybe soft is good. So there are the two different ways of actually painting the egg and the five different ways of achieving the speckles. And sure, these are all sugary, pretty chocolatey colours but using more natural colours you can incorporate eggs into your art and more importantly you can incorporate those smooth washes and those texturing techniques into your painting.